So what we're learning is that two out of six regional water quality control board members pr prefer Boeing. And why is that? Because they're contractors. They're actually compensated by it Boeing. It has not rained now for quite a while. So when they say that there's not enough water to fill an eight ounce sample, and I see this every day, it makes it really hard for me to trust them. hundred and sixty seven pages long that sounds really credible if you look through it you'll only find three air samples three three that's not enough to give you a representative understanding of what was happening now to further compound that issue Boeing is issued a report using Stantec as a contractor now Stantec they used Phil Rutherford. Those of you who, who have been involved for a long time are very familiar with Phil Rutherford, and he has been a long-time Boeing employee. So what they do, even at the neighborhood council level where they've removed term limits, is they've put in Boeing-friendly people that manage to change public understanding of these issues. They actually altered the choices and then voted. These things would be considered illegal in fact, they are illegal. The only reason that nobody's doing anything about it is because, because it's much easier to deny. That doesn't help. No more pretend solutions. We can't be inventing a solution. We need to use solutions that exist. We know that there's a traffic light up at the, up at the site. They didn't put it there voluntarily. That is there in order to regulate how many trucks per hour can leave the site and it is limited to one per 20 minutes. So to suggest that more trucks than that will come down that hill during cleanup is just simply false. It's a false choice being given to the public in order to make them more afraid of the solution than the problem. It turns out plutonium lasts a really long time. Even when we talk about cesium-137 that I think only lasts, the half-life is something like 28 years, that still takes over 200 years to be gone because we're not starting at zero. To, to suggest yep. that the data isn't there because the data that we are using to draw conclusions that the site is contaminated, the Santa Susana Field Laboratory is contaminated, is their own data. This is data done by the Boeing company. And now we're learning that not only are they using their own data, but when they're trying to suggest that it's independent sampling, they're actually using former employees posing as contractors. So this is all a very tight-knit money machine. We have signed agreements, $15,000 per day per polluter. That's $45,000 per day for 365 days plus another 180 days, that's 540 days, that's $24 million and 500 and some odd thousand. So we need to be collecting on those penalties because those penalties mean more. Even though the Boeing company is some of the deepest pockets in the world, they also have the deepest resources. And using local people to smear others, to silence others, that's why we need you to use your voice. Thankfully, Melissa has managed to build support of over half a million people. So we need to respect that and do something substantial, tangible with that accomplishment. Thank you so much, Melissa, and your courageous little Gracie, who has been uh, an ambassador for protecting children. Down Downstream here is a West Hills baseball field where four of their coaches um, 
have cancer, and three of those cancers are in the same kind of cancer, multiple myeloma. So this is something that is, in my view, quite alarming and something that we need to be looking into and not pushing under the rug. You and I both know that that isn't right, and we know better. We also know the toxic substances that were used and discharged from the site. We know that. We also know that 60, 60 years have gone by since, since the meltdown in 1959. And still we are fighting for no cleanup because they're not doing their job. Once again, after 35 days of shutdown, what did they do? They had a busy signal at the Department of Energy's office here that entire time. And then first thing Monday morning, first day back to work, the deadline's passed. And they've agreed to not do the cleanup that they promised. That they promised over 10 years ago. How long are we supposed to wait? How, how far downstream is this supposed to go? When we think about climate change, we think it's too big a problem. We can't do anything about it. But when we look at a stream, we understand what is wrong. When we can see pollution, we can understand that it needs to be picked up. When we know that it is toxic, we understand that those things are toxic. So is it really reasonable to assume that when we come into contact with those same toxic substances because they come off this creek, that we're supposed to believe that it isn't toxic now? If EPA spent $42 million of the American Reinvestment and Recovery Act uh, to find out the truth, they took thousands and thousands of samples, how is it possible that after a fire that burned 80% of the site, according to Boeing, as well as 96,000 acres, the Woolsey Fire recovered, which started, which started on Boeing Company property. That's a fact. So you and I, we need to ask ourselves, why is it that we know that's true and yet in every news story with the exception of the LA Times, that's off, um, they're not mentioned. So it's interesting, today I was gonna go back to that same spot to show the difference, because it's only been raining, you know, not a lot at all so far. It's just been very, normal single day rain event and yet this is the uh, bridge that I would have to cross to get to that trail and as you can see it is flooded and there is nobody getting across so this is a lot of water and as you can see it isn't clear because it's eroding the sides the banks because of the amount of water that's what happens on these significant rain events and as a result, when this happens, the water quality goes down. What gets washed downstream, that water quality goes way down. And that's why it matters when we, when we find out that they don't ever sample, um, you know, when it's actually raining. This is a significant amount of water, and because of the fire, because of the Woolsey fire, I would imagine that has a lot to do with why this water quality looks so bad. So I'm going to go upstream, so you can see here, you know, this, this Adidas ball is really, you know, another example of the kinds of things that you would not expect that are going to get washed downstream. Now, obviously, a ball is not a problem in a toxic way, but you can imagine when 60 years of toxic discharges that have been soaking into this hill get washed away, because this is not clear water. There's nothing clear. There's a lot of sediment. This. So if they tell us that it didn't rain at Outfall 2, there wasn't enough water to take a sample? Is that really what they're going to tell us? I don't know. I'm hoping not because they've now joined forces and now the water board, because I made that presentation, which I even videotaped, um, they've now banned me 
from communicating with anybody except for the acting director, Renee Purdy. Or a acting executive officer, Renee Purdy, who is, um, since Deb Smith resigned or, or left or something. So this, this area here, this is just showing the kind of erosion, the unexpected soil erosion that is just going to add to that water quality in a bad way. Um, and this is what we're talking about. We need better. So this is the water quality that we're seeing coming off the site in Dayton Canyon. As you can see, sediment and, ero and erosion problems are a real serious problem. And we need to ask why proper sampling, independent sampling isn't being done.